Hi, I'm Charlie with Precision Matthews, and we figured while we had the vices and mills out from last video, this might be a good time to talk about tramming your workpiece so that you're square and parallel to some reference feature on that part. Tramming happens with basically every new setup, so it's important to understand if you want to make precise, repeatable parts. Let's get started. Let's say you've got this regulation aluminum thingamabob and you need to do anything to it. Drill, tap, mill, face, whatever. You'll want to establish one of these faces as parallel to one of the axes on your mill so that you can locate the features you're going to add. That can be done in one of two ways. Tramming the part by itself and securing it to the table, or securing the part to an already trammed fixture, like a vise or fixture plate. We'll start with the former technique and secure our part directly to the table. We clamp one side down relatively firmly to act as a fulcrum, in this case the left side. Then tap the part one way or the other with our hammer to rotate it about that fulcrum until we're happy with how parallel the indicator is reading. When we're happy with our indicator reading, we'll snug down the other clamp, check that nothing is moved, and we're ready to proceed with our operation. In this case, we trammed one of the faces to the x-axis, but you can tram any face that you can measure to any of the three axes using this same principle. How you choose to do that is going to be dictated by what your operation is. Now some of you may already be yelling at me through the screen for tapping my part with the hammer while the indicator is still in contact with it. The textbook way to tap parts is to pull back the indicator tip from the back, tap the part, then drop it back on. The dropping it back on part is why there are still some old timers who call these tools drop indicators. But if you don't have a living memory of the Cuban Missile Crisis, you just call them dial indicators. Regardless, this is the official way to use your dial indicator. To exaggerate a little, here I am hitting the vise harder than I ever would for tramming. See how it causes the indicator needle to bounce? That is admittedly not good for the clockwork parts inside the indicator, and if you do that regularly, it will reduce the service life of the indicator. But I would justify doing that under a concept I call cut fat. Join me on this tangent. Cut Fat stands for Charlie's Unified Theory for Abusing Tools, and it simply states, my willingness to abuse or even destroy a tool in the name of time savings is inversely proportional to the cost of that tool. Additional tangent, every knife maker will tell you not to put a chef's knife in the dishwasher. The problem is, I want to put my chef's knife in the dishwasher, and I don't want to wash my chef's knife by hand. According to Cut Fat, this chef's knife can go in the dishwasher. This chef's knife needs to be washed by hand. The main difference is price. A four-figure chef's knife is a piece of art and an heirloom that you would pass down through generations. A $60 chef's knife can be used and abused for decades, but it won't exactly be listed on your will. Another example, slotted screwdrivers are not pry bars, punches, or chisels. And this $42 one is certainly none of those things. It's just a screwdriver, only to turn screws. But one that costs $2.50 is all of those things, plus a hammer, ice pick, welding slag scraper, bottle jack handle, and a hundred other uses I haven't discovered yet. To bring this tangent in for a landing, this indicator is not to be in contact with the part as you're tapping it back and forth to get it trammed. This indicator, however, cost the same as about 10 minutes of shop time if you bill at $100 an hour. So if abusing it saves 10 minutes before it fails from that abuse, it's paid for itself. And using this $17 indicator to tram the quicker and more abusive way might save 10 minutes in the first day, depending on how much tramming you're doing. Now that we've covered that, let's try the second type of tramming I mentioned, where we tram some fixture to act as a reference surface. In this case, a vise. We'll tram to the fixed jaw on the vise so that anything that's held against that jaw 
is now being held parallel to the x-axis. Notice that because I'm doing it the wrong way, not lifting the indicator from the vice jaw before I tap it with the hammer, I can crank the handle and tap at the same time. So I have it basically trammed by the time I get from one end of the jaw to the other. If I had to stop and lift the indicator each time, it would take quite a bit longer. As you're trimming, just be aware of where the fulcrum is so that you know the point that your part or fixture is rotating about. For my part from earlier, the fulcrum would be here on the clamp that I tightened first. On the vise I used for demonstration, it could be two different places. If you're using the outside mounting bolts like I did, your fulcrum would be here. If you're using the swivel base, the fulcrum is right in the center, so you're actually passing that fulcrum as you're sweeping across the vise jaw. That means if you want to rotate the vise clockwise, you want the jaw to go closer to the indicator if it's on the right side of the jaw, but further away if it's on the left side. If you don't grasp that concept, you can struggle with the swivel base for longer than you need to. So there you have it. With that information, and with a bit of practice, you can tram a part or fixture very precisely in not much time. Now there's more that goes into making good parts than just good tramming, but without that, precision and accuracy go out the window before you even make a chip. Comment below with your best example of saving time by abusing a tool, and let us know what's the most non-hammer tool that you've used as a hammer. Until next time, thanks for watching.